So I'm in the house and like just cleaning everything up, like wiping everything on the floors, just a gunk everywhere, just making it like fresh. And I forgot that the water wasn't turned on because I had the handyman turn it off for the ice freeze. So it's been off the whole time. And so like, I didn't know what to do. I called the handyman, I called my friends. I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. Like, how do you turn on the water meter? And then I figured out how to do it myself and it felt so good. <gasps> so I'm going to quickly, as soon as possible, like I had a bunch of coffee. I'm gonna quickly, as soon as possible, just finish painting this bathtub, make it ready, and then send the tenant like a really nice message and uh, you know, with a, how to get in the house and how to navigate everything. And uh, she already paid, oh, so great, so great. Um, okay, gonna get that done. So basically done, just gonna put this microwave dish you know, there's like a whole, there's a few things here that are still dirty from like the previous guests. Things that I need to like clean up, like there's still um, laundry in the dryer. So I'm just going to fold those up, put those on the shelves, you know, get them ready for the tenants. You know, it's, it's still going to be like a fully furnished house. And, you know, it's going to operate the same way that my Airbnbs operated. But the only difference is... The only difference is that these tenants are long term and you know they're here for at least a few months at a time so um and also they're vetted so it's not like the airbnbs where literally anybody can uh book it it's more like i'm oh god i have so much allergies <laughs> this city for example has restrictions which i didn't pay attention to before but they have restrictions about like what how many tenants are allowed to be here, how many people at a time, all, a bunch of building codes, inspections, permits, stuff like that. So I did, you know, I've been taking care of that and it's a lot easier than I expected. It's still annoying, but it's easier than I expected. And so, you know, like I registered the name of the tenant, everything with the city. And so there's like a lot more that goes into having long-term tenants and that I didn't have to do with Airbnb. But in terms of the actual property, it's I'm running it as if I was running Airbnb. I'm charging way more than I would charge for like a typical tenant that doesn't isn't furnished and is taking care of their own bills. Like I'm taking care of all the bills. I'm taking care of the maintenance, repairs, like everything. Literally all the tenant has to do. I mean, I even have shampoo, conditioner, like coffee like literally everything they need in order to live here even water bottles food like everything so literally all they have to do is pay the rent and not make a mess which like you know they have you know they have their security deposit which isn't a lot they have their um uh they have their name with the city so like if anything were to happen the city would know about it so there's a lot more like accountability than Airbnb has because with Airbnb I ran into a lot of issues and like I'm gonna talk about it more in like future videos you know maybe put it on my real estate channel but I, I really ran into a lot of issues with Airbnb and um, Airbnb used to be more accountable with these, these kind of things like they used to like even cover the costs of stuff that people would do to your property if like there were damages and stuff, Airbnb would take care of it. Now they say they take care of it, but they don't actually take care of it. They will, uh, they'll make you chase after the tenant first and try to take care of it yourself. And they'll make you actually like, they'll make you go through a whole process and first actually try to get the money from the person directly where like they don't even want to have anything to do with it. So, so, and, and, and all they will do is say, hey, reach out to the tenant directly, here's their number. But obviously a tenant that is destroying your property is not gonna answer your calls. And it's not, so like, that's not really them being helpful, that's just them throwing the problem on somebody else. And so what I would much rather do, which is what I'm doing right now, is 
you know, operate the same way that Airbnb would because the Airbnb idea is a great idea. There's so many people that like can't afford to like buy a whole bunch of new furniture just for like, in, just for like a short term stay or like even just a few months or even a year. They don't want to like, like, set up a whole place just for that. So there's a whole bunch of people that are like being mobile and don't want to be like settled in one place. Um, so the Airbnb model is great and they're willing to pay a little bit more money for that. A lot more money actually. But on the other hand, like um, you do want accountability and like you do want to know who's going to be in your property and you, you do want to make sure that like if they damage things, you know who they are you know where they live, you know how to like get them and that their name is at least registered with some kind of local government or renter's insurance or something. Like you want to have some kind of accountability in the people that are staying in your property that you worked so hard, spent so much money on, like so much money on in my case, I spent so much money on this place and uh, like it, it's my baby. And so that that's like the happy medium for me at this moment is renting furnished properties to long-term tenants that are like long-term meaning one month or more at least that you vetted that you did a background check that you got a criminal history that you got their work history now i'm in the bathtub i showed you guys yesterday this um thing that's in the bathtub like the the peeling I know there's gonna be some sound from the fan. I'll show you. So we have this. Um, I got this waterproof paint that I'm gonna use. I've got this sealant. I'm gonna put this in on first. I really don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna like try to like um, seal any um, possibility for leaks, tears, and just paint it over. And uh, that's it, man. I'll show you what happens when it's done. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a challenge to open. I mean, I barely was able to open that and I ended up like cutting my finger. So let me try this. All right, finally opened it. I've never done it. I've never done this before. So I'm gonna try and I, I, I left my tripod at home. So it's gonna be a challenge filming this. So I'm gonna just try as much as possible. But in any case, I'll show you the end result. I'm gonna leave this in the basement when it's done. So hopefully the tenants don't decide that they want to do some kind of art project. They won't. They're like adults. Really, honestly, the ideal tenant, at least from my perspective right now. All right. Here it goes. All right, it's going to gonna take a while for this to work and actually my my handyman warned me that I'll have to do a few coats so gosh this looks really atrocious I think we done. Uh, the instruction say that you have to wait in like uh, 40 hours to use the shower. The top looks new again. Uh, I'll find something different because your paint does not work. You see this one? I'll find it in the lows. I'm about to do a little bit of work at a coffee shop, respond to a few clients, and uh, also send out like a welcome email to my tenant that's coming tomorrow. And I'm so excited! Real estate is, you know, real estate investing and like building, the nitty gritty stuff is really a lot of work. It's like, gosh, it's really a headache. And if you don't have like the perfect tenant, it's you you really just want to shoot yourself like because it is really a lot of work and i would much rather
be on kind of like the outside uh, like just be like a marketing person like I'd much rather not have to deal with it but you know like I you know I, I really wanted to get rid of that house and just sell it and be done with all of that but you know I did find really the perfect tenant and there's something about that house that attracts like that attracts women um, I mean it attracts all kinds of people it's really a great house and uh, but but there's one demographic that I, I got a lot of as um, when it was a short-term rental and that was same-sex female couples and those women are so underrated like same-sex female couples they're you know financially stable they tend to be very quiet very clean they come in and out they always leave like the best reviews they always pay on time like they always like t follow the rules they're just so easy and there's something about the vibe of that house like I don't know a lot of same-sex female couples I really don't but um, there's something about that house that is attracting like the majority of the people that are there are like those kind of people there's something about the house and it's like I, I'm trying to figure out what it is maybe it's the style of the house but I'm trying to figure out what it is so that maybe I can in the future create a business model around it because I uh, I love those guests and so it'll be interesting to see you know if I were to do any kind of like real estate the way that I'm doing right now um, and I probably will because I'm like already in it and it does make good money if it's you know it could lose you a lot of money but it could also make you a lot of money and so if I if I were to try and focus on it a key demographic same-sex female couples I would focus on and I know you know, I know same-sex male couples are also tend to be financially stable, but those people, you know, they, they tend to be really good financially, but I have a friend who focuses on that niche market in DFW, and he, he tends to run into a lot of trouble because, you know, those guys, at least the guys that he's hosting or his tenants tend to be party animals and um, louder. They tend to have a lot more sex or at least a lot more like fun and crazy sex, which is nice for them, but not nice for whoever has to clean up after them. So, um, yeah, so I just really like excited about this stuff.